I'm not a prophet of doom. And I, 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 as I respect God and I respect myself and I respect your trust for me. So if I stand here and I tell you things, especially I'm prophesying, I make sure that I know what I'm saying. I saw something about next year that will make you need this message. Because what I saw is going to be a time of turbulence and serious challenge for believers. I'm not a prophet of doom. My teaching grace is enough for me like that. I mustn't prophesy. But if I open my mouth and I tell you something, you just believe it. So don't ignore, when you see God bring things like this, he's redeeming the future. There is something he has seen. You see that now. I saw many, many, many people folding their companies and people, both father and mother, losing jobs at the prime, not even knowing what to do. PTA meetings happening and teachers are saying, you cannot drive our children. Why don't you structure the payment? When I saw that thing, my heart, I said, God, what is the meaning of this? When God shows things like this, it's not to put fear, but he's showing it so that believers can be prepared. Now you have something on ground. God has shown you mercy. I wish I had the time I would have taught you on financial carelessness. There are people who are going to spend everything God gave them this December and then suffer by January. Hear this servant of God, don't. There is nowhere written in the Bible that if you don't eat cow and chicken, you will not commemorate the birth of Jesus. Live a modest and a decent life within your means. Are we together now? Remember the dream of Joseph. Seven years of plenty. Seven, if you have the money, fine. You, God bless you. But for many of us who, especially those that the year has been rough, there is a mindset people have that once it is Christmas, burn everything you have. Finish all the money. Live a fake and a false life. Carry your family and go around the world and then return back and suffer. That's not a wise bargain. For someone, God is helping you to now begin to be frugal. Another thing I would have thought about is, is living a fake life. One of the major reasons, a fake life is very expensive. Write it down. A fake life is very expensive. It takes so much to fund a fake life. And once you start, you must maintain it. A fake life is very expensive. If you are not there, you are not there. You can start gradually with the dignity of kingdom integrity. A fake life is expensive. Don't try to buy a car that is not yet your level. Don't try to go and live in a house that is not yet your level. You are living in a house that you are owing three years rent now. You can't pay back. It's a sign you are not yet there. Get out of that place and look for a decent place. Hallelujah. There are some of us who do not yet have the means to start gathering people and celebrating elaborate birthdays, elaborate occasions. No, be patient. God is bringing you there. Even for schools, as much as I would want you to educate your children at the highest level, you must be wise and keep them within your budget. Find the best school that your budget can afford. If your child is on scholarship, that is fine. Otherwise, find the budget, the school that your budget can afford. But by all means, Koinonia, please hear me. Great disaster is going to befall many. And there are many who will begin to tour the corridors of compromise because of this finance thing. I shall not want, it's not just a prophetic declaration. It is a declaration that comes with responsibilities. And the responsibility is learn all you can. Now that God has given you a good job, don't waste your salary that is coming. Learn all you can about investments. Are we together now? Meet intelligent people with integrity who know what they are saying. Not people playing games all around, playing games all around the internet, deceiving and fooling people. Don't fall prey to some of these things. Seek counsel. There are five kinds of investment you must make in your life. Number one is your spiritual investment. Number two, investment in your mind. Let me give you this and then we'll wrap up. Five kinds of investment. Number one, your spiritual investment. When I talk of investments, I'm not just talking of putting money. Your relationship with Jesus is a potent investment that has returns, even financial returns. Number two, mental investments. What you store in your mind is there. You don't need to refrigerate it. You don't need to warm it. It is there. 
and will always be ready to be delivered when needed. Number three, invest in your health and your well-being. It's an investment. Invest in your health and your well-being. It's often said that people deteriorate their health to make money, then they use the money they have made to now maintain their health that is now deteriorated. Don't be like that. Invest in your health and your wellness. Number four, invest in strategic relationships. Relationships are an investment. They bring returns. Mighty, marvelous returns. They bring returns. I shared a story in Ghana that I want to share as I wrap up. A wealthy man had a son. He had a son and this son lived a very careless and a riotous life and the man got sad and said, I will never give you anything of my estate. And he called the servant and he told the servant, you have been a well-behaved person. I give you the liberty to choose anything you want to choose. And the servant chose the estates, chose the cars, chose some of the businesses and chose everything. And while he was choosing, the man was touched with compassion. And then he said, are you?